That's not clutching, scrub! It's only a clutch when you have like 10 HP and you kill three people in five seconds to win the game in a 3v1! To those people, I would ask that you first please calm down, and secondly, open your mind to the idea that a clutch play in Fortnite can take many forms, but every one of them has the same effect. It either changes the outcome of a fight or the entire game. So whether you're headshotting with a snipe, healing teammates with a chug cannon, or shockwaving a downed teammate to be res safely, these all can be considered clutch plays. So let's explore how we can turn the odds of a fight more often while playing Fortnite Zero Build Mode. The first secret to clutching is staying calm, collected, and confident. 100% of your brain needs to be focused on problem solving and outplaying your opponents. You can't be stressing or doubting the outcome of the fight at all. This sounds simple, but it's a completely different way of operating for most players who end up in stressful situations. When all of your teammates go down and you're up against unlikely odds, you need to welcome the challenge and instantly jump into a winning attitude. How am I going to win this? Instead of the typical thought process of, wow, this sucks, I'm screwed, let's not try to embarrass myself. You see, an optimistic point of view creates opportunities. It keeps the hope alive and fights to find a way. Action after action. I'm telling you, this is probably the most essential part of clutching. You have got to believe in yourself. A pessimistic attitude will quickly shut down any possibility of winning against hard odds and they won't see the opportunities before them, so they don't even give themselves a chance in the first place. The good news is that you can become a clutch player without having to play thousands of hours of Fortnite and gain crazy levels of skill or confidence. There are three main ingredients to work on here and I can't dive into them too deeply or this video will last forever. We will cover these in another video, but basically we're trying to enter a flow state where calculated actions become effortless. Here are the three mental aspects you need to practice while playing all the time. The first ingredient is to always keep a positive attitude while playing. Don't commit the treason of negative self-talk or complaining. Your subconscious gobbles that stuff up and takes it as truth. Then it processes all your gameplay actions accordingly. So yeah, if you say you suck, you're gonna suck. Instead, you need to accept challenges and believe that you can overcome them. Wouldn't it be something if I clutched this? The second ingredient is breathing. Your first response to a stressful situation should be a deep breath, followed by many more deep breaths throughout your play. In through the nose, out through the mouth. This is more oxygen entering your lungs and feeding your brain while also calming you and allowing you to take calculated actions. This is a science-backed technique and it's taught in every branch of the military and is a trick that almost every elite athlete uses. And the last ingredient is to enter deep focus and commit completely to solving the problem. It's just a simple problem and you can do it. But it's not just enough to say this stuff and store it in your brain for a week. You have to put yourself into stressful situations or chaotic situations and practice this mentality while in combat in order to gain the confidence and habit to do it in real games. And the best way to do that in Fortnite is with creative maps in public lobbies, where the stakes are lower but gameplay is just as intense. I highly recommend the Coney Crossroads Deathmatch map by Pixelated Dreams. Here's the code on screen now. This puts you into constant chaotic battles where you can practice these three things while competing in endless combat. You might get tilted or even start negative self-talk if people are destroying you, but that's an opportunity to flip the script and practice positive self-talk. Just go through the three steps, positive attitude, deep breathing, focus in and solve the problem. If you can't handle the stress of a custom game, then you will not be able to clutch up consistently in a real game. Okay, I feel like there's a lot more to be said about the mental game of clutching, but I think that's for another video. This video is starting to sound like a TED talk, so I'm sorry about that. Now let's cover the tools you can use in Fortnite to turn the odds of your fights. The items in your inventory and the environment around you need to be viewed as the solution to clutch up in a hard situation. Most of the time, there are some really awesome opportunities to make a clutch play with the equipment or the weapons that you're holding, but it's overlooked in the heat of battle. I catch myself all the time after I die saying, Ugh, I should've used the port of fort I should have thrown the launch pad. I should have shocked wave behind those guys and put shots on them. Why didn't I throw the launch pad to get high ground? Why did I just stand there? Therefore, you need to not only be carrying playmaking items, but you need to have a plan on how and when you're going to use them when the situation arises. When it comes to weapons, you should always carry at least one hard-hitting weapon that can deal damage quickly 
and a finishing weapon. That way, if it comes down to it, you can quickly eliminate enemies without taking much damage yourself if you're using the environment well. Now, if you really want to clutch more consistently on the offensive side of things, you need to realize that the physical distance and the element of surprise are your friends. You can't have multiple enemies within an arm's reach of you and expect to come out as the victor nor can you have multiple enemies putting damage on you while you trade damage back to one of them at a time. You will never win unless you're playing bots or potatoes. Instead, you need to master controlling space and turning your fights into individual 1v1s while using your environment to your advantage. The advantage that you have in these types of fights is that your opponents are often overconfident and no longer trying to survive. They are salivating for the kill, so it's common for them to make mistakes, which is great for you. For instance, if you end up in a situation like a 3v1, you need to figure out how you can space out the enemy and fight each one individually or take them by surprise. Most times, the team will chase you and then they'll split up and try to secure a perimeter of sorts. Fighting in a 3v1 becomes very manageable when you only have to win a 1v1 three times in a row, and in two of those fights, your enemy barely got a shot off because they didn't know where you were or they were out of position in the fight. My personal favorite way to do this is with shockwave grenades and a sniper rifle or a ranger shotgun. I always plan to create space, cause confusion, or quickly close gaps with shockwave grenades to fight individual opponents at a time. The important piece here is to use the environment to your advantage to conceal or protect yourself from the other enemies while fighting an individual. Then heal and move again after securing the kill. Now, thirsting a knocked opponent is usually recommended to cut off information sharing unless you want to use them as bait and they don't know where you went. If you're playing in a team, a clutch can look like getting a perfect flank on the enemy team and shredding them from the back while they're focused on your teammates. I can't count how many squad fights I've turned around because I got a perfect flank on another team and caused heavy pressure from a different angle. But that's just the offensive side of things and puts a lot of focus on skill and guerrilla tactics. If you aren't a very mechanically skilled player yet, there are still many ways to clutch up using creative problem solving. For instance, I can't count how many times my wife has saved our entire team from certain death with her heals, revives, and defensive equipment. I'm one shot hiding behind a tree with an enemy sprinting towards me and she throws a porta bunker right under me and hits me with three chug splashes from a chug cannon. If I went down right there, there's a very good chance the squad loses the battle and the game. But instead, I'm now healed with high ground and cover. Rest in peace to my enemies. That was clutch. Or we're stuck in the storm and most of us didn't think to grab green health. We are 30 seconds from certain death, scrambling to survive, and she calmly asks everyone to line up together to spray us all at the same time with med mist for full health. She's carrying two of them because she's planned ahead. There was no chance of our team winning the game unless that play was made. Clutch. Porta bunkers are a great example of an equipment item that can be an instant reverse card in a fight and create the opportunity for a clutch play. If you're being pushed, you can quickly throw one down to get high ground and excellent cover from your opponents while they're stuck out in the open and can't get to you without running around the entire structure. If you play the cover right, you can quickly turn the tide of a fight and beat the odds. Or you can throw one down and double revive a downed teammate before enemies arrive. Chug cannons or chug splashes can turn the odds of a fight by healing a teammate quickly that's being pushed by an enemy who thinks they're weak. Shield bubbles can save your entire team if you're caught out in the open or get surrounded. Or if your car is about to blow up, you can throw a shield bubble on top of it and drive away safely, where your whole squad would have died otherwise. Clutch. You can use a launch pad or a shockwave to get out of a sticky situation and take the high ground or get a flank to end up winning the fight. Order your whole team to group up and splash them with your chili splashes while a sweaty enemy team pushes you and they're soon to find out that you're all strafing and moving like unhittable demigods. Clutch. The point I'm trying to make is that there are many great equipment items in this game and weapons with unique uses that can be used to clutch in various ways. But sometimes the problem is that people don't have a good game plan to use them when the pressure's on. And that's where staying calm and collected through stressful situations comes in. Because the plan can fall apart or be completely forgotten, but if you've got a clear head and a little bit of creative problem solving, you can clutch up in all kinds of situations and get the unexpected victory. So I urge you to come up with a few battle plans for each piece of equipment or weapon you're carrying and how you might use them in combination to get yourself or your team out of tight situations. All right, I hope you enjoyed the TED Talk. 
If you want to improve your gameplay, subscribe to the channel for more value packed videos. And if you want to increase your chances of clutching even more, you probably want to watch this video next.